Hey, how's it going? Aura Pampa here, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to become a voiceover artist, particularly the skills you can stack to become a voiceover artist. In a previous video, I talked about how to become a data analyst. In a previous life, I could say, I once was a data analyst, but I was actually preparing myself to become a voiceover artist. I was doing voiceovers on the side, so in the evenings, on the weekends, and whenever I had a break, if I was working from home, I could also work on that as well. If you choose the path of becoming a voice of artist, there are certain skills that are necessary to have in order to be successful, particularly when you're just starting off. Now, you have an option. You can either learn all these skills or you can also hire people to do some of the skills if you have the finances to do so. But I would actually say it's really worth learning these skills as much as possible or at least to a basic level before you then start outsourcing so that you have an idea of what is needed. Without further ado, let me tell you what those skills are. First of all, it's your voiceover technique, so actually how you deliver on a line or a few lines. Then the next would be audio editing, so actually being able to record and then remove the parts that are not necessary and make the audio sound a lot cleaner and nicer. And the third is setting up your recording environment. Now, many of you who would be starting up as voiceover artists will be starting from your home studio. You've got to create an environment that sounds good and you want an environment that sounds what we call dry, which means that you don't have echoes when you're recording. And you can achieve this with simple things. I'll tell you about that later. The fourth skill you need to learn is communication. And this is a skill that you can apply across different industries, across different fields. The important thing is to know how to communicate with clients in such a way that they are happy communicating with you and they are happy with the work that you deliver to them. Now, when I say communication, just to clarify on that a little bit more, I mean things like knowing how to write emails properly, so proper spelling, grammar, but beyond that, also keeping your customers aware of everything going along across the process. So things like letting them know how much things will cost, how much time things will take, asking them what their requirements are for the voiceover audio. For example, they have quite a few technical requirements that you might have to meet. So asking that upfront so that you can prepare before the day. Also asking them for the script beforehand, that sort of thing. Then the fifth thing you need is business skills. Now that involves things like marketing, things like knowing how to sort out the taxes for whichever country you live in. It also involves things like invoicing. Actually, invoicing is probably one of the most important business skills. So setting up an invoicing system where you can send the client the costs associated with the voiceover and then monitoring that and making sure that you get paid and get paid on time. So those are the five skills that you need to become a voiceover artist. Now I'm gonna drill into each of those skills and explain them in a bit more detail. A voiceover artist is somebody who uses their voice to communicate a message for different things. And oftentimes the person who's speaking is invisible in that media. So things like radio adverts, TV adverts, e-learning, audiobooks, uh, presentation videos, all sorts of things, maybe even podcast intros, basically where a voice is used to communicate a message. So the first skill is your voiceover technique. So knowing how to deliver on a line in a way that's believable. Do you need to sound like a young child? Do you need to sound like an older adult? Do you need to have a particular accent? Do you need to deliver in a way that seems authoritative or like a friend having a close conversation? These are things you need to practice and pay attention to when you're delivering on a line as a voiceover artist. So the second skill to talk about is just setting up your recording environment. Now, for many people, they do different things. Some record in closets, some record um, using a combination of duvets and blankets and pillows. Um, so I'm actually set up a proper home studio at home. The important thing is knowing what you're aiming for, which is sound damping, which is basically reducing the likelihood of having echoes in your recording so that your recording sounds crisp. The third skill is audio editing, particularly if you're working from home and you're having to do a lot of auditions before you actually get jobs. It's worth learning at least the basics of audio editing. That involves um, cutting and removing parts that are not required in the audio because when you're recording, you will make mistakes and it's fine. It's just knowing how to remove those mistakes from the recording, then maybe doing a bit of noise reduction to reduce any of the low level noise that comes in your recording. Besides that, there's also audio normalization. Then you can start moving on to learning things like audio equalization or EQ. Then the fourth but often overlooked skill is client communication. And this can make or break your client relationship. You have to communicate with clients for different reasons. Most times this communication will be over email, but sometimes over audio or video calls. What I would recommend though, is that if you have a conversation with clients over an audio call or video call, still send an email to them just to clarify that these are the things we spoke about on the call and make sure that everybody's on the same page and you also have a paper trail to refer back to in case there are any issues that come up in future. 
Now, things to communicate with clients include things like timelines, things like the technical recording um, requirements that the clients may have. Also, understanding when the client deadline is and communicating how much time you need in order to record the first draft, potentially, and then time for edits and revisions as well. Then you also need to communicate costs and then come to an agreement on payment terms. So when you do the job and then when you actually do get paid for that job. The fifth skill is actually a, another stack of skills, which is your business skills. So things like marketing communications, things like understanding invoicing and payments and paying your taxes, very important. And so those are the five skills that I believe are very important when it comes to becoming a voiceover artist, particularly a voiceover artist that works from home. Tell me, are you a voiceover artist or have you heard of voiceover before? Is it something that interests you or something you'd like to get into? Let me know in the comment section. If this video provided you any value, go ahead and leave a like emoji or a thumbs up emoji in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video. In a future video, actually, I'm going to tell you about my journey into becoming a voiceover artist. I think that might be an interesting story time. Keep an eye out for that video. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. But in the meantime, check out some of my other videos that pop up somewhere on the screen. All right, my name is Aura Pampa and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye.